Yeah. Okay, we're live. Hey, hey, everybody. How's it going? I guess I got to start this out the way I would normally start this out for everybody who's watching this channel and watches all the unboxing stuff, and that is, what's up, collective fam? It's your boy, Tony the Toy Rat, and I'm here doing an unboxing of the live Ronin with three very special, talented people, two artists, and one fabulous cover inker. And that is, everybody, wave up there so, so people can actually see you. Go ahead. Okay. There you go. That's better. They're actually listening. <laughs> Daryl Murphy up there on the top. No assault there in the middle. And Jeremy Clark there on the bottom. Hi, guys. How you doing, man? There hey, you go. Look, chatter, chatter. We keep this thing light and fluffy, people. All right. So why are we here? A couple of different reasons. One, um, we all got shipped the same thing. Some of us have kept it in the diamond box. Uh, uh, Daryl Murphy, he'll show us that whole box here. He's got more <laughs> unboxing than everybody to do today, okay? Everyone else has got it to this level right here, and that's what we're here to open and talk about today is the uh, Diamond Select Gallery Edition uh, Last Ronin. And we have the people who work on those projects ready to talk about how they feel about how this statue came out. So I guess uh, with no further ado... Let's 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 unbox it. Merry Christmas, oh. everybody. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Let's, let's start with the box, right? Because yeah, I, yeah. I, I, there's there's a couple interesting things here on the box itself, art wise, that I don't know if people can can see. But there's little images going all the way around the box of various uh, art. So, like for instance, I believe that's Ben Bishop right there on the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be we go. So this is actually uh, Eric Henson, who I got to ink on some of the issues. He may or may not be working on a very cool turtle uh, cover coming here up in the very near future. And so there's these cool little images going all the way around the box that actually highlight a lot of uh, artists and creative art teams that actually got to contribute uh, to some of the various uh, covers. Related to the last Dude, I, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. Every time I open up these boxes, I, I used to keep all of the boxes for just this reason, because sometimes there's like super cool artwork on it. So as I go through and I unbox these things, I'm talking and I'm not unboxing, so let me continue to do that. Um, as I go through and unbox these things, I always comment as to whether or not they have some cool elements, whether they should be kept or not. Uh, me personally, I've got way too many statues now to keep the boxes, so I, you'll see all the videos. I usually just chuck them behind me and then, and then tell everybody to, to recycle. Uh, but actually, among those boxes, and I can show you a couple of other ones here. I've got like a Taskmaster and a Power Rangers. This is actually the most heavily um, artist-driven piece. The way they did the back, the statue layout right here with this whole scene set up, they rarely ever do this whole thing with the gallery dioramas. And I can show you another one here where they don't have it. So, I mean, that's really cool by itself, um, yeah. just through the displayability. And then, of course, what Jeremy was talking, we have actual artwork from actual comic books that are sitting at the back of the box. So as much as I want to keep it, I'm probably not going to, but uh, it is cool as hell. Let me pop this thing open. Yeah, I figured I'd just give a you know shout out to some of those. Yeah, let's get Ben Bitch up. Maybe we maybe he'll he'll want to unlock the door. Ben all doesn't right. need any more shout outs. He's doing all the box art for the next stuff. Uh, <laughs> that's what it looks like on the inside, guys. The last Ronin. That's what it says on the inside. It's this big red box. So they they got all the cool artwork on the outside. Uh, as is typical with me, make sure you recycle. We'll just chuck that over there. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a little piece of tape usually between these things, and then there's a little suction cup. And I'm just going to pull this out. Chuck that shit over there. Okay. Wow. He's finally open. Let's give everybody a little uh, flicky loo while you guys are getting them out. Hey. Yeah. Right, I, can't, I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of this piece. One of the one of the interesting things I said about I say about all these toys that oh, I have. Tape. Yeah, there's idiot. a little piece of tape holding it together. <laughs> I was like, why can't I get it out? Casey Jones mask yeah. on the bottom. You saw that guy? That's pretty cool. Um, 
Uh, most all of these statues are embedded in a rock of some sort. I mean, I don't know why, but uh, a lot of these statues <laughs> have, have rocks underneath them. Uh, I'm glad to see this is rubble, not rock. There is a distinction, right? Rubble. Yeah, so, I see a pipe in there. There's a sewer pipe, you know. Yeah. It's not just a giant rock he's hopping off of. Yeah, I like the detail on it, too. That's pretty cool. I like yeah. that the, the pipe in the back has that silver flux as it turns the elbow, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's I nice. Like, yeah. I like that Casey's uh, straps to the actual helmet on the outside of the rock just kind of laid over on the side like a memorial, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's good sculpting on the uh, the Casey's mask of his strap that comes off to the right side. That was just kind of like I like how you put the bit. hook. I had was the, that there? Or they put the what? The, the hook in the back. The grappling hook. Yeah, yeah. that grappling hook. And I I also like that that grappling hook isn't like a, a hard solid piece. If you wiggle it with your finger, I'm not sure you guys can see that. You can oh, wiggle yeah. that with your finger, so it it actually feels like a a movable piece, even though it's not. Yeah. yeah, his goggles are kind of a little, or the same way. They're not like yeah. completely sculpted in. Yeah, I love those pieces. Those are my favorite things. I I can't stand when you, like, I don't know if you guys know the Hot Toys. They come with like 18 different <laughs> arms and four different portraits. Oh, yeah. That's, that's just shit I'm going to lose. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> I, I, I'm never, ever going to pick that up and say, oh, I need to change this portrait again. This is, that's, I'm, I'm only so geeky. All right, so. Um, I like the fact that it feels like this should come off, but it's still one solid piece. Well, it, it does sit very flat, too. I noticed that the base is pretty sturdy. It does sit flat. It doesn't have like a wiggle to it, at least not mine. Uh, I don't know if that's the same with everybody else. So that's that's good. You know, naturally, you want a nice, stable base so it's not top heavy or, you know, back heavy uh, on any of these things. And so... I do enjoy that, but I also like the fact that he's got these like little, you know, like uh, war scars or, you know, wounds across the, the tip of his nose and stuff, too. You got these nice little like uh, details in regards to him being kind of badly damaged, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I do like that that touch there as well. We shout out the sculptors here. I should have done that to begin with. This was designed by David Forrest from Kinetic Underground and sculpted by Alex Belov from Kinetic Underground. David, so, Alex, great work, guys. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Well done. Well done. It did, really, it did a really good job with these values on here. Yeah, I agree with you. Color change all the way through. I love the way the hood looks over his head because if if you guys are taking a hard look at it, the way it, the, the hood goes over his head, you can see sort of the material bump in the back, yeah. which is that's just a really nice detail. You know, it just looks like it's supposed to be some kind of leather hood rather than a helmet, which is not what it wants to be. Yeah. I think one of my favorite details is Mikey's chucks on the back. Yeah. Those are really good looking on there, man. That's dope. Yeah, those are dope. This whole setup is dope. So I'm going to play ignorant um, because although I know what the last Ronin is, I'm not sure I am as steeped in the lore as I need to be. I rely heavily now upon my artist and inker friends here to illuminate what exactly happened here. So I know there's only one turtle left. All three brothers were killed. I don't know who killed them. I, I make some assumptions. Should, should we? Is that is that a problem? Should we not be talking about this? Is this a secret? Yeah, that no one knows? I, I think enough times passed, honestly, because we're on okay. the what, third series now, basically. Okay. So who killed him? I don't know. Shredder's grandson killed Donatello and Splinter, and basically Baxter Stockman's Foot Clan, Foot Robots killed Leo and Casey, and then Karai killed Raphael. Wow. And I think that's the death toll right there, the whole family except for Mikey. So yeah. Mikey was a lone survivor here, yeah. and his goal now is to avenge those deaths, correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So he's just killing everybody who helped kill this family. Basically. Okay. <laughs> All right. Out for revenge. The last Ronin is an anti-hero, question mark? Uh, I mean... He's, he's killing people. 
That makes it an anti. They can be bad people. Is that is that not the the criteria for anti-hero? You're 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 killing people, but they're only bad people. So you can't be a hero because you're killing people, but they're and only bad. And his sole purpose is revenge. So I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, yeah, it could be a, he could be seen as an anti-hero. I guess yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I guess we'll cross that path when the game comes out. Hmm. The game comes out. Which game are we talking about? Is this Mortal Kombat? No, nope, Last Ronin. They're uh, supposed to be working on it, but uh, they're saying it's supposed to be like God of War. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. You don't. You don't know anything special about this, do you, Mister Murphy? <laughs> anything you want to? I got to <laughs> do some more research on it. Okay, that was just a little nugget you're just tossing out there. Just well, just it's in the beginning stages. They did like a little teaser for it. You can find it on YouTube if you if you're like really interested in it. But there's no gameplay or anything yet. They're just start just now started working on it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, they basically just described what studio was in development and uh, you know what their role was. And beyond that, I mean, there's not a whole lot more details that that have been released. At least to the general public. I mean, I'm sure uh, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin knows probably for sure. But uh, you know, I as far as far as the general public is concerned, now there hasn't been much more than that. Uh, I will I will say though, in regards to the anti-hero uh, comment, that uh, you know it, it there is a bit deeper uh, you know storytelling than merely just a revenge uh, story. I mean naturally the the mikey would be the the best individual to to write this story arc for because he has the has always been the less you know uh, mature of the turtles always has to yeah. um, you know see things as a little bit less serious yeah. and so you know, just from a writing perspective alone it made sense to have him be the last one because you get to see the the divergence in his character uh, and and the characteristics that he portrays, you know, and and all the emotional reality and and other sort of things that that contribute to why it's obviously a revenge, uh, you know, path for him. Does he maintain uh, so I, any of that? Does he maintain any of that 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 Michelangelo uh, funny childlike nature as the last Ronin? Does it is there is a bastion of childlike uh, stuff left in him, or or is it all gone now? And his new character is just kill, 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 revenge. I don't know. I would say it's all gone, but it's very it's a much darker tone yeah. for Mikey than he's ever taken before. Okay. Yeah, I think I think the 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 Mikey of old is is not 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 there anymore. You know, imagine the type of impact that it would make on on any individual uh, yeah. to have to uh, endure their entire family's destruction. I mean, uh, that's going to take a toll on anybody, but especially on on somebody who's generally speaking so much lighthearted and more lighthearted than the rest of them. Uh, yeah. So I think that in itself is, is part of the reason why uh, he was ultimately. I love that we just got deep. I didn't expect that to happen. But now we're talking. <laughs> I'm going to take that one to the grave. Jeremy Clark just went deep in on Michelangelo. You didn't see that coming. So uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I think that. Wait, that's right. This is just supposed to be about this statue. So we back to the statue. We're still talking about the statue. It's still. <laughs> We haven't even gotten into the how you guys actually feel about it. We're just comments about the little things real quick. I just want to make sure they got the bottom. Okay. All right. That I mean, that is um really great introspective, I think. Um, yeah. and I and I appreciate it too. And obviously I need to to delve a lot deeper into the, the turtle lore and what's happening there. Um, because I'm i I've, I've been more um adept at getting the book signed. Thanks, Noah. Um but, uh, you know, I have that sitting over here on the side, and I, I refuse to open it or touch it because he signed it. So I have already a bunch of books that are screwed up. So I screwed myself into reading the book is what I'm saying. Uh, I'll have to get another one. Hey, hit guys. I'll give you my address at the end of this. Okay. Uh, that being said, why don't we take a look a little bit at the statue and uh, some of the things that we might categorize as a rating system for this guy right here. Okay. So – um, 
First thing I want to look at, I think you guys have already talked about it. I've been fairly sure you're going to give it high marks. But in the character set, did they nail what the character is supposed to look like from the comic books? Go hard, guys. Leave none standing. Chop them up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, from my standpoint, uh, you know, everybody's turtle looks different. That's the great thing about having different people draw different Ninja Turtles. So right. this is like their own take, but with the outfit, it's completely, is right to me. It's canon to me. So yeah. they nailed everything, and they just did their own interpretation on the face. Uh, and everything looks great to me. I mean, if I did uh, the drawing for this, it would look different. If Jeremy did the drawing or Daryl did, it would be different for them to go off of. So I think it's great what they did there. Okay, cool. So that the face being slightly different, is that a plus or minus for you? Mm, I, I like for my turtle to have a little fatter head. Yeah. But that's just me. Yeah, I just thought he has eaten out of why he looks like a revenge turtle. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm only focused. I'm not fuck pizza. I'm never eating pizza again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go kill people. That's what I'm doing. So he's just lost a lot of weight because he does look like he's, you know, he's carrying a lot of armaments too. You know what I mean? So yeah, he's he's slimmed and trimmed like Rocky IV. You That's know, right. he's, try, he's trying to he's trying to make sure he lands a harder. A harder punch, uh, I think, but uh, no, no, it does make a good point. Um, generally speaking, the the you know the turtle's dome, if you will, is uh, is is a little wider, um, you know, like in terms of, of the actual width of the, the crown of the head itself. At, at least on the ones uh, on any of the various covers that I've worked on, whether it's the regular series or Last Ronin, uh, yeah. generally speaking, the the crown of the head isn't uh kind of tapered like it is here it's more of a you know a, a wider it's kind of got a broader head like broad shoulders but broad <laughs> so um i i, I do uh, agree with him in that regard so let me ask you something about the eyes on this because and I, I, maybe i'm drawing a blank and i need to grab another book in front of me here though are the turtles eyes always white there's never been a pupil in a turtle eye right uh it depends on who draws them and huh? what iteration it is. Sometimes there'll be eyes within the bandanas, and then sometimes the bandanas will be just whited out. So yeah. So for for instance, if you look at your own shirt that you have on, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I was wondering. The, the older right. classic version has the uh, the 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 pupils, um, and so it 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 is dependent on which series it's from and uh kind of you know what the setting is as well i mean naturally under a bandana you know unless there's direct light kind of casting up in there you're not gonna you're not gonna see much right uh, and they're so bright white right now so i mean yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's the setting as well i, I think that, that that is something that or plays into uh, this one of them on the inking them Okay. Oh, it plays into the ink and go. See that? Look at how you drew that into your art form. <laughs> Sir, I tell you, you've been interviewed once or twice before. That man right there on the bottom there. Daryl, you realize that this entire time that statue's taking over your head, right? I just want I just want you to know no one knows what the hell you look like. I'm trying that to position, glorious right? beard. Just, there you go. Everyone else I can see. No one's far away, but you are covered by a statue. <laughs> I feel like you're hiding up there. Okay. You got you got you got be part of the team. You gotta talk it up, buddy. So um, I noticed, like from the comics, um, the front part of his face oh, is kind of like they kind of brought it out, and it's so, kinda, so like it's, it's over the top. No, like like right right here under this under peak his point nose, here. Yeah, his nose, that 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 part too. His hood, they brought it over, but in the comics, like um, it just goes up and down, straight back like a regular hoodie. Okay, okay, yeah, that's a good point. This is more Assassin's Creed type. Well, good point, sir. The Assassin's Creed hood. That is, I, I, I didn't think about that, but it, is, it does have this sort of kind of point thing happening before. And it, 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 it's reminiscent to me of like medieval armor, you know, mm -hmm. what they would put on before they would put on the, uh, the actual helmets. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That, that yeah. cloak they put over their head with the chain mail, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we should also mention that while all the weapons are featured here, 
Uh, it doesn't appear as if any of them are interchangeable or movable or, you know, in, in any type of uh, alterations beyond what is is there. Me personally, because I'm a huge Leo fan, I would have loved to have the the ability to maybe, you know, pull a pop in a sword, yeah, or, or at least have the ability to pull it out of the hilt or do something that would, would be, you know, interesting in regards to whatever anybody's favorite weapon is, you know, like obviously everybody has a favorite turtle. And so those turtles have different weapons. So I think it would be fun to play around with, uh, you know, kind of making them a little more accessible to whatever your personal favorite is. Yeah, I think that might have been really cool. The, the ability to personalize them and have that whatever that characteristic is face yeah. forward, you know, face forward. And and they could have done that. I have a Deadpool over to my right over here where they ship the statues independently uh, of the sword. So, I mean, they're in the same package, but they're they're not affixed to them. And you take yeah. the swords out and you put it on the, you know, put it on the hands. I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I could actually show you they're on video. There it is. So I, I, I've got I've got a dead I got a Deadpool here and you know those two swords came in the box independently and then you can put them in so I could literally change the orientation of the swords but not the swords so the concept would still be the same obviously right I I should also point out as well at least on my statue I don't know if it's the same with everybody else but uh, there is some visible. Um, wear like uh, on certain areas of the paint um so like what on the you know where i can see the actual cast peeking through yeah on yeah. some of the areas uh yeah so it's not exactly a hundred percent you know refined in in that regard um but also i don't know what the price point of the statue is we should have probably started with that because you know i might, I might be sitting here like no 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 see it should yeah.